Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.2. Talk about density, states of matter, mixtures, and how to separate mixtures, and how to be fancy. So let's check it out. Physical changes. So, physical changes change in mass, shape, but not identity. So if you cut something in half, or boil it, or melt it, or freeze it, um, or mold it, I don't like mold it, perhaps shape it would be better. This is what I meant by molding it, not like growing mold. So it's still the same thing after the change. So if I dump something, if I dump boiling oil on someone, it's still boiling oil. Chemical changes change the identity after the change. So it'll have a new formula. So if something burns, dies, precipitates, forms a gas, changes a color. Now, forming a gas can be tricky because boiling forms a gas, but it is not a chemical change um, because it's still the same thing. Still the same. Hey. Sure. Hi. So, pure substances. There are two types of pure substances, elements and compounds. Elements are one type of, ele of atom. And one type of atom, typically you think of something like iron or helium. But they can be diatomic, and you need to know your seven diatomics, which are Hunkelbrief. And you do need to memorize those. So if I say is nitrogen diatomic, you do need to know that that means that when it's by itself, it'll always be two. So a good example of that is chlorine here is NaCl, and it's not two because it's not by itself. It has to be bonded to something. In this case, it's bonded to sodium. If it's by itself, it'll bond to itself and make Cl2. Compounds have more than one type of atom. Notice hydrogen and oxygen, different types of atoms. And it's not a combination of the properties. It has new properties. So water, for example, hydrogen in a fire explodes. Bang. Oxygen in a fire gives you brighter fire. H2O in a fire gives you no fire. So those are very different. The compound is very different from that. Mixtures. Any state in any state is possible. Okay, So I can have um, solid and liquid, liquid and liquid, liquid and gas, all that kind of things. Things in gas um, don't really happen, except for gas and gas. Homogeneous, the prefix homo means the same. It's called a solution. And every sample will be the same. Okay. Heterogeneous, hetero means different. So the samples are different. Um, living things we typically think of as being heterogeneous. So genius is relative. Okay. So something might be homogeneous um, by looking at it with your eyes, but heterogeneous under a microscope. So that genius part is relative. So if I look at something and it looks like that, but when I look at it under a microscope and it looks like that, then you go, oh, this, you know, if this is with your eye, this would be homogeneous. And this is the microscope. This would be hetero. Obviously, that's a smaller sample. Okay. Salt water is homogeneous. Salad is heterogeneous. You can tell the different parts, right? There's a carrot. There's some lettuce. There's someone's hair. That's disgusting. Grass, um, I tend to think of, my default is thinking of it as a, on the microscopic level, and I think the questions they would give us would be um, a comparison like this. But grass, to me, is heterogeneous because you can see the different parts of the grass. The root, as they say in Indiana. 18 karat gold is called an alloy. And alloys are solids in solids, and they are homogeneous. They're an even mixture to get the properties of both. And again, genius is relative to size. Not, not to size, um, to magnification. Ding! So if I look at this, um, this is a pure element, right? Only one type of circle. This right here is a compound. This right here is an element. It's a triatomic element. See, dot, dot, dot. Instead of diatomic. There are none that I know of that are triatomic, but that's a decent example. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. 
because the samples are not identical. This is an element. This is an element because they're not touching. Touching would mean mod bonded. And every sample is not the same, so we'll call this hetero. You can tell on a microscopic, they call these molecular eye diagrams. It's really hard to have a homogeneous mixture. This is supposed to be water. Water looks like Mickey Mouse. So see how this is one molecule? So this is a pure compound. This is a pure element. This is a pure element, but notice, hey, that's diatomic, and that's what it looks like in the molecular I version. Easy element, easy element. See, that's just one thing. Here, this is a mixture. Notice how this side has a little ring dot. This side has double big ring. This would be heterogeneous mixture again. This one, again, the mixtures aren't exactly the same, so it's going to be heterogeneous, and it's a mixture because I have double big ring and that. Yeah, you can do the rest of them. How to measure. All instruments have a numbered, an unnumbered, and an estimation. Digital also does. Nifty story about digital things is the last digit when digital balances first came out used to flicker. And that's because it was either 1.71 or 1.72, and the instrument couldn't do any better than that. So it would flicker back and forth to let you know, oh, it's somewhere in there. So that's valuable to do. But what happened is people would see this digit flicker back and forth, and they would think that it's broken. So they would return it. So because people are dumb, oh, they had to just make it pick one and stay. Okay. Now, numbered, unnumbered, and estimation. So if I put a line right here, my numbered digit says it is 6. Now notice these are millimeters. My unnumbered, 6.1, 6.2, it's not quite to 6.3, so it's 6.2. And then I estimate that to be 6.28 millimeters. Okay? Numbered, unnumbered estimation. Okay? So this one has a numbered part, 15, right? It's between 15 and 20. An unnumbered part would tell me this is 16, 17, 18. So my unnumbered part says it's 16. Is it right smack dab on 16? Yes, it is. My estimation is this. And graduate cylinders typically are in milliliters. Accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close you are to the target. Precision is predictability, repeatability. Better instruments make better precision. You see this with bullseye things all the time. So if I'm shooting targets and I go, bang, that's an accurate shot. Okay, but if I have a cluster of things right here, shot, 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 this is predictable, right? So this is precise. Because if I am going to aim at the bullseye again, I'm going to hit this spot. So precision means repeatability or predictability. Accuracy is whether it's on target or not. Separation by distillation. Separation by the boiling point. Different things have different boiling points. If I have a mixture here, I heat it up. Part of it, part of it is going to boil, and then you recondense and collect it. The other part stays. Density is love. And the reason why density is love is density is mass over volume. See how it's mass over volume with a knife through it. Okay. So there's density's formula. More dense things sink. Saturn's density really is 0.687. Water's density is one. So that would mean that Saturn floats on water. Crazy. Separation by filtration. So if I have a mixture up here, and my filter has different size holes in it, then what happens is the little guys can fit through the holes, the big guys can't. So that's separation by particle size. There's also separation by chromatography. Okay, Separation by solubility and size of the paper. That's the paper chromatography, which I hate. Um, solubility. Um, by attraction to the column and mass for the gas. So, so solubility by attraction to the column. So solubility, so what am I saying here? For this part right here, if you've got your mixture, sample applied to the top of the column, what happens is, and this is a liquid, over time the more dense stuff settles out, right? And then you can pour parts off, okay? So that's one of the, it's column, this is column chromatography. All right. Paper chromatography is where you have your mixture right here, and you put it in a solvent, and it will climb up. And what you end up with is your piece of paper that will have a line here and a line here and a line way up here, and you'll see those three parts. 
No one uses paper chromatography anymore. Gas, chro gas chromatography can be on the, on the test and on the AP exam. Gas goes through a tube, which is a stationary phase. So a tube, psh, psh, probably nonpolar coated. So it's got a special coating on it, nonpolar, so that it's non-attractive. If it has the same attractions, so that means if the gas that you're putting in here, so I've got a gas that's going through here, and if this thing has the same attraction as this, it'll go through slower. So typically we're talking about gases, and the gases will expand and spread out. If it has a b higher boiling point, it will move slower, less gas-like. It will stick to itself, and it's slow. So if I have these guys right here, my particles I'm looking at are X's, and X's are attracted to themselves. They're like that annoying couple in the hallway that just is stuck there, and they walk slow, and you can't walk around. And you're s just stuck looking at them, and they slow everything down. Okay? So it's going to go slower. The other particles eventually will get around it, and then you walk faster because you just don't even want to be around it at all. The mobile phase, which is what it's being carried in, is typically atmospheric air that carries the gas we're examining. The gas exits the tube, and a chemical sensor detects the concentrations of the stuff coming out. So eventually there's a detector here, and you can tell what those are. So looking at this, notice this is time zero, right? Time zero is over here, so my time's getting bigger. Why is the solvent the first one to come out? The reason why it comes out is because it is the least attractive and light, which is the most concentrated. Now, you may think that it's linoleic acid because it's taller, but see the cheesy little thing right here? Um, the most concentrated thing is the solvent. You're always going to have more solvent than the solutes. The next most concentrated thing is linoleic acid which is likely to be part of linoleic acid that decompose. Sometimes in these things, they will get all messed up, and it is either of these. You can't quite tell, but it, to decompose, it's got to be smaller, right? So it must be smaller to decompose. And which has the strongest attractions? The ones with the strongest attractions would be the slowest. So the slowest is not linoleic acid, it's linolenic acid. This is the slowest, so it must be the most attractive to itself. Review. A physical change stays the same thing, right? A chemical change changes identity and it changes physical properties. So it's something new. No distillation, chromatography, even paper, even though I can't stand to still use it, and filtration. No elements, compounds, and mixtures by picture. Touching makes it a bond. So on that happy bonding note, I will say, toodles.